Today we're going to be learning a super fun yet easy visual effects shot that you can do right from home. Like always, if you want to work along with us, I have everything that I use for you to download down below. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is orientating our screen, and I find using the FSpy add-on and program is kind of the best way to do that inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and launch that up. Both of those links are down below for you to download. Now I went ahead and converted my video to an image sequence, so I'm just going to import in the first frame right there. And you can see this default scene loads up. I can go ahead and turn the dim image off. And then we have these lines. I basically want to line those up to our scene. So I'm going to line this up to kind of be kind of this line on the freeway. And then I'm going to use this kind of house down here to be my other line. And the most important thing is making sure where they meet down here, kind of this vanishing point is roughly around the horizon line. So I'm just going to move that maybe down a little bit right there. And then for the X axis, we can just use the actual billboard itself. So I'm going to place it, uh, the first one on the top and then the second one on the bottom like that and then if i kind of bring this down let's actually turn on the 3d guide and go to the xy floor and you can see that it's basically set up a floor in our plane let's go ahead and set the origin somewhere around the bottom of our uh, billboard that's actually going to be used inside blender so i'm going to go ahead uh, control s to save the project and we can just save it wherever we want and then we can go ahead and exit out of there and you do want to make sure you have the spy import add-on so edit preferences add-ons and then if you type in spy up here you'll see that we have this import spy project and that'll be very important so you want to make sure that's checked and then if we come up to the file we want to go ahead and import in our .fspy down there and then just locate wherever you save that okay so once you found that i'm just going to click that and import that file in you can see it's created a new camera so let's just delete everything else that it automatically created with blender and then we need to go ahead and model out the actual billboard itself so i'm going to shift a add a mesh plane then we can go ahead and rx rotate that 90 degrees and then we can go ahead and model this out. So I'm going to hit G, Z, move that up. And then if we go uh, hit tab, I want to go into edit mode. I want to go in uh, to vertex mode and then just G, Z, move that up to kind of the edge of this billboard. And then same for kind of the other vertices, just select those G, Z, move that up. And then G, X to move that to the side. We basically just want to match the corners of our billboard as closely as possible to the actual footage. And then right there so that is looking really good and you will notice if we kind of scroll through our footage uh, it's actually still just the png uh, the first frame and so we actually need to import in the entire sequence now so let's select our camera go to camera settings background images select movie clip and then open up our image sequence so just come here hit a to select everything and open the clip so now if we move around we can actually see movement now i did try to actually motion track the scene and camera track it but i was finding some difficulty uh for how accurate this needs to be and so what i'm actually going to use is the keen tools geo tracker add-on so if you want to download that you just want to come up edit preferences again and and then once you hit install up here, uh, you just want to make sure that this is checked. And then uh, the face builder and the geo tracker, you can go ahead and download those things. And then if you come back inside of Blender and hit in, you will notice that we have a new geo tracker kind of section over here. We want to go ahead and create a new geo tracker. Uh, it's automatically set our geometry to be the plane and the camera to be the camera that we're viewing it from. And then the clip, all we need to do is come over here and set it to be kind of our footage like that. And let's just make sure it is our footage. And yes, it is. And so now what we do, uh, since this is kind of the first frame, we want to go ahead and kind of track the actual camera of our scene. So if you haven't messed around with the geo tracker add-on before, uh, first of all, we do have to analyze the footage. So you'll see this analyze button here. Mine says reanalyze since I've already analyzed it, but you just want to make sure you analyze that. It'll kind of go uh, to the end of the footage and then back to the beginning, kind of analyzing the pixel data in the actual footage itself. And so what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to help us track the actual camera in our scene. So let's come down to the tracking settings, go to camera, then we can start the pin mode. And the nice thing is since we already modeled it out to the first frame we don't need to pin any of the actual geometry to our scene uh, we can just leave it default like this and then hit this button to actually have it start tracking forward and that is important to know you can see that we already have kind of a camera focal length and that's actually a focal length that we got out of fspy and so it's very nice fspy uh, and this program work uh, together very well to actually get some camera tracking in our scene um, and so that's going to give us uh, really good camera tracking you see that now that's 
done, we can exit out of the pin mode. And if I kind of zoom out here in our scene, you'll notice that the camera is actually moving instead of our object. Okay, so now that the camera is tracked, we can go ahead and hit in to hide this. And we want to go ahead and play around with some settings, some render settings in our scene. So if we come out here to the render view, I'm just holding Z to go to that menu, by the way. Uh, you'll notice everything is kind of this ugly gray color. So what we can do is go ahead and play around with some render settings. I'm going to come up to the render properties, go and set this to cycles. Then if we select GPU compute and I want to denoise the viewport, but I don't want to denoise our render. And then we can go ahead and just set the sample count down low for the viewport since it'll run faster. And then uh, we'll set it to a 256. We can always change that a little bit later. I'm not going to go too much into those render settings. Okay, so now everything is still looking gray. Let's go ahead and get our footage back into the background of our camera. So if we come up to render properties, I'm going to go down to film then transparent. And so now what we want to do is go ahead and play around with some stuff. I want to go ahead and select this and I want everything else around it to kind of be this holdout object. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit. So with that selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode, go to uh, select this face. And then if we hit E, uh, that'll extrude it out. And then we just want to hit S to kind of uh, scale that out just so it's uh, surrounding everything. Then if we just select this uh, main face again, we want to uh, delete the big face. So now that that's deleted, we can basically see that we have uh, a normal plane now, but in this middle section, we have where the actual billboard is going to be. I want to go ahead and separate those into their own objects. So what I can do is with this selected, I'm going to hit P and separate by selection. And so now we actually have two objects right here. Let's name this one. I'm just going to name this holdout for now. And then this plane, I'm just going to name the billboard so we can keep things organized. And so now with the two separated, we can, of course, make this a holdout object over here. So we're going to go to the object properties uh, all the way down to visibility. And I'm going to set this mask to be a holdout object. And what that will basically do is anything behind this object that we have as our holdout won't be rendered. It'll just be kind of that transparent thing. And so only the things in the middle um, right here are going to be rendered out. So, uh, of course, uh, if for my scene, I did make it kind of a pep Pepsi can, but uh, that's going to be a long process to actually model out and texture that and everything. So if you want that entire video, uh, let me know and I might make that in the future. But today we're just going to stick with a super simple monkey. So I'm going to go ahead and add a shift a mesh uh, monkey right there. And then let's scale her down a little bit, place her like right there. And then let's actually place her for now kind of behind this plane. It'll make sense in a little bit since we're actually going to have her kind of uh, affect this plane and make ripples uh, like water. And we actually need to go ahead and animate her. So maybe on frame 30, I'm going to hit I and add a location keyframe. And then I'm going to go to like frame 70, G, uh, Y, move her out of here, and then just hit another location keyframe. So now you can see we have the monkey basically going through our plane like that. Of course, nothing is shaded right now, and so everything is still this ugly gray color. So let's go ahead and add some lighting in our scene. Let's go to the world properties. I'm going to make this uh, set to in the environment texture. Then we can go ahead and open up the HRI down below. Okay, so here's our HRI. I'm going to select that, open the image. And then if we actually go up here to the material preview mode, and then I'm going to go uh, select this and we can actually use the scene world right there. And so now we can actually see our HUI and we do need to kind of position that. So you'll see that the sunlight is kind of like over here. And if we go into our actual footage, you'll notice that the sun is kind of coming from this direction. So we need to match that as closely as possible. Let's bring another kind of window out here and then go into the shader editor hit in to hide this little menu and then go to the world properties and with the node ringer add-on let's just make sure we have that so add-ons again a lot of add-ons for this video but this one comes with default with blender so you just want to make sure that's checked so if we select this node and then uh, Control t it'll add a texture coordinate and mapping node we just want to go ahead and play around with the z rotation until the sun is basically the same kind of uh, direction as our sun over here so let's mess around with this a little bit more and then place our sun right there. So now you can see uh, our sun is basically coming from the same direction as our plate. If it's a little hard to see for you, what I like to do is come over to the render properties again, go down to film, and I want to change the exposure down to like a 0.5 maybe. And then, uh, you know, that'll help if we go back out here and change the transparency off. That'll help you kind of tell where the uh, actual sun is. So let's change transparent back on. And now uh, we have some shading in our scene. 
Uh, let's go ahead and actually deal with the ripples of the actual billboard. So uh, first of all, we do have the animation already, which is very nice. What we're going to be using today, though, is a physics uh, simulation uh, basically called dynamic paint. So let's come over to the physics tab with our billboard selected, and you'll see this dynamic paint button. We want to go ahead and click that. And there are two modes, there are two types. There are canvas and brush. Basically, canvas is gonna be whatever our is gonna be actually rippling. And so, of course, we want the billboard to be our canvas, so we're gonna add canvas. And then down here, we have the surface type. Uh, by default, it's on paint, and that's good for like adding uh, vertex paints and all this stuff if you need to do any texturing um, or anything like that. But, of course, we wanna add ripples, so I'm gonna click this and go to waves. So now it's basically set it to be our waves. Of course, we don't have anything affecting it right now. And so that's actually where our monkey comes in. We need to select the monkey, do the dynamic paint, and then add, instead of canvas, we want this to be our brush and go ahead and add that in. And what that'll do is basically take all the geometry of our monkey and basically affect the waves of our actual uh, plane right here. So let's go ahead and play the simulation to see what we're getting. Okay, so you'll notice that the billboard does nothing when the monkey goes into it. And that's actually because we don't have that many, uh, you know, vert vertices in our actual plane uh, of our billboard. We basically have four right now. And so it's going to use the vertices, as you can see over here, format uh, vertex. So since we only have four vert uh, vertices, it's not using a lot of, you know, geometry data to actually create those ripples. So I want to come to edit mode, hit tab, then we can just uh, select this face. I want to go ahead and right click and subdivide. Now we need a lot of subdivisions. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up. We'll say like 75 for now. Uh, and you can see it's basically created a lot more geometry in our scene. And so now if we kind of, you know, back out of there and play that, we should see that it affects it now. Okay, so there we go. We now have the monkey actually affecting and rippling our plane surface. So that is all looking good. Of course, it's looking a little bit um, weirdly shaded right now. So let's just right click and shade smooth. Um, and of course, if you want it to be, you know, more high definition, you would, of course, come back into edit mode, right click, subdivide again. We'll maybe uh, subdivide it one more time like that, just to add a little bit more uh, geometry in our scene. And hopefully it should be smoother now. Yeah, so that, that looks pretty good. Now let's actually get into the materials over scene. Let's have some fun there. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to make this kind of like a mirror material like I did in my actual shot. So I'm going to come out here to the object properties, new material. I'm going to name this billboard so we can keep everything organized. Uh, and we're just going to use the principal BSDF for this. So uh, I want it to be a tr uh, slightly transmissive material. And also the roughness I want way down so we can get some cool reflections in there. And then specular I'll turn down just a little bit. And let's make this kind of a more grayish looking color. Almost like a mirror um, sort of effect. And so that's looking pretty cool right now. You can of course play around with the roughness a lot more. And maybe even the transmission roughness. And just play around and get a pretty cool result that you like. So I'm going to go ahead and save my project like that. And then as for the monkey, let's select uh, the monkey. And then let's just name that over here. Monkey, keep everything organized. And for him, let's just do kind of, you know, let's see what a cool color is. Like red, maybe. Um, change specular. Let's also right click shade smooth. And then we can just change the roughness down. I'm not going to do too much with the monkey because it's really just kind of a proof of concept type visual effect shot. And so now that's pretty much it of uh, what we're going to be doing. You can you can totally see the monkey through there. So if you don't want that, you can, of course, play around with the keyframes. I'm just going to keep it for uh, my, you know, kind of result. Uh, one thing I will notice is that we're not getting any of the ground reflection. And so in order to add that in, let's go ahead and add a mesh plane. I just want to scale that up a lot. And then let's add a new material. I'm just going to name that ground. We want to delete the principal BSDF and just add a image texture node like that. And then of course we want to project um, the actual footage onto our image texture. So I'm going to open that uh, image sequence up again. So select everything with A and then open the image. We're going to go ahead and auto refresh that, plug the color into the surface. And then if we do the same thing as we did before, uh, control T to uh, this node, it'll add those nodes again. And we want to go ahead and set this to be windowed. Let's just view what that's doing. 
and you can see it's basically projecting the uh, image onto our plane uh, from the view, uh, which is our camera. Uh, it's giving some weird clipping issues over here. So what I'm going to do is set this, instead of repeat, I'm going to set this to be mirror. And so it gives us a nice little uh, effect right there. Of course, I do want to go ahead and make it its own collection. So I'm going to name this just Reflections because I want to set this plane into the Reflections collection. Then if I uh, enable the indirect pass kind of link up here, I can turn that on. And so now it's not rendered in our actual camera, but it is uh, still affecting everything down here. Uh, so that kind of just helps blend in the shot a little bit. And yeah, so now let's uh, let's go ahead and render out a image. So compositing, use nodes. I'm going to go ahead and combine our movie clip back into our thing. So just open up our Pepsi footage right here. And we want to go ahead and combine them with a alpha over node. So I'm going to place that there. The render layers needs to be on the bottom socket and the movie clip on the top. And then if we control uh, shift click that, we can add a viewer, just V to view that out. Uh, one thing I do notice real quick is that we actually have the wrong color space of our footage. Uh, now the filmic transform is great for, you know, CG elements, um, getting the most high fidelity thing. And honestly, that is the thing that you should be doing. You should be taking this into another program to composite. But since we're going to be compositing inside of Blender, we do need to come down to the render properties, color management, and set it from filmic to standard. And now you can see our colors are way more accurate. Again, this isn't really the workflow that I would recommend uh, since it, we are losing some color data of our actual render layers node. And so that's just something to consider if you do want to take that into another program, you do want to leave it on uh, filmic. So now let's go ahead and render an image, just see what we're working with. Okay, so now we have basically this monkey coming out of our kind of um, you know, portally looking, you know, mirror uh, thing. Of course, you can do a lot of stuff with this. Um, I, like for my example, I did a Pepsi can coming out of it, um, you know, as inspired by the original shot. And so some final things I want to do is I want to match kind of the color a little bit closer. So I'm going to go ahead and add a glare node right here. We can make that instead of streaks, we're going to make that fog glow. And I'm just going to change the threshold down to like 0 0.3 maybe. Uh, you can see if I turn that on with M, uh, you can see it's adding some glow right there. I will notice that we're not kind of getting that edge light of the actual kind of, you know, light coming from our scene. So I want to get that in. And I believe if I hide this, yeah, you'll see that our holdout kind of object right here is actually blocking some of, some of that. And so to uh, disenable that, let's come to the object properties, go down to visibility again, then we can just turn kind of all these uh, ray visibilities off. Um, and so now that's not really affecting it. Another thing that you could do if is if you don't like the transmission, you, you don't like kind of the light look there, you could add a plane uh, kind of behind it, almost using it as a flag. Um, and then right there. And then you do want to place this kind of in the normal collection. Uh, you don't want that in the reflection collection. And let's select that. We just want to scale that up. You can see it's kind of getting some of that out there. It's really kind of up to you based on how you want this to look. Um, so, yeah, this is before and then this is after. So, again, it's kind of really what the type of look you're going for. I actually kind of like it without it. So I'm just going to delete it and leave it as this. Let's go ahead and render out one final image to see uh, if we need to make any more changes. Okay, so let's do some last minute changes. Um, the first thing I want to do is, of course, add some motion blur back in our scene. Um, and so the default shutter should be fine. Uh, and the drone really isn't moving too fast, so I doubt that's going to do too much. But uh, it always blends it in a little bit. And then let's come to the compositing tab and let's view some of the stuff. I want to decrease the threshold to see uh, if we can get any more of that kind of shimmer through. And that looks pretty good. Um, I do kind of want to try to match the black levels to kind of the CG as closely as possible. So what I'm going to do is uh, Shift-A, add a color balance node. And then what I like to do is set it, instead of lift gamma gain, I find that offset power slope is a little bit easier for me to kind of wrap my head around. So I just want to kind of increase some of the slope. You know, just play around with some of these values. The biggest thing I'm looking for, and this is where I'd like take it into Nuke and really go down and break it into the correct uh, color channels and, you know, get the black levels and white levels matching. But we're kind of just eyeballing it there. So you can see right around there, 
I'm basically just looking at kind of like the black levels here compared to like some black levels of the window and stuff like that. That matches a much, much better than it did before. Here, I'll mute it before. So you can see the blacks are super, super dark. And then uh, we just brighten that up a little bit. And so, of course, you can do a lot more stuff with this, but that's the basic kind of workflow. Uh, one last thing I want to uh, show before we actually render this out is you can actually go ahead and bake this if you want. You know, if you're kind of moving around this, it's not really going to be, uh, you know, real-time simulations. If I actually come to the beginning and say I'm, like, scrubbing throughout here, you'll notice that we no longer see the ripples before, even though they should be there since the monkey is on this side. Uh, what we can go ahead and do is actually come and select, with that selected, if we go to the physics tab, we can come all the way down to the cache section and we just want to go ahead and bake the actual simulation and so now what that's done is basically baked it into its cache and so now we can you know scrub throughout and the physics uh, remain the same all the time another thing i do want to point out is uh if you do add like a subdivision surface modifier um so say i add a subdivision surface modifier before this uh, for some reason it glitches out the entire thing and so say if we play like the animation now with the subdivision surface modifier it'll basically create just a ton of problems um with you know rendering out the thing that's something i ran into with testing and so whatever you want to do you just want to go ahead and delete any subdivision surface modifier and you can see it's back and if you do want higher resolution you will again have to go into tab and uh you know subdivide it again uh and so that's how the workaround there again it's kind of a like a weird process um inside a blender i don't know why that does it specifically but um so if this is the you know simulation and result that you want to render out let's go ahead and go in compositing make sure that whatever you render out is connected to the composite node that's very important and then we want to go ahead and uh, come back to the layout tab you want to make sure that you're not in the rendered view so we're going to go to solid view i've had some problems in the past if you're in rendered view in this uh, port it actually renders it alongside the actual render and so you're basically rendering twice the information and you know it takes up more cpu and gpu usage and so uh, now we want to go and output settings i do recommend you uh, save it as a png sequence so just save uh, wherever the uh, file location you want in here so once you have that saved you can come down here and automatically sets it to png uh, i like using png you can also use uh, jpeg um, or but even better uh, open exr is uh, you know kind of the industry standard kind of file format uh, we're going to set RGB since there's not going to be any alpha channel. 8 compression depth is fine for this uh, shot. And then the compression down to 0. And then with all that saved, you can go ahead and render the final animation. Okay, so here is the final result that I got. Again, I used a Pepsi bottle uh, just because I was inspired by the actual shot. Um, however, I didn't do for that for this tutorial since I didn't really want to focus on the modeling. And that would take us, you know, over an hour to actually model out the bottle. And it wouldn't be uh, paying attention to the actual interesting part about the shot, which was the waves. Anyways, I hope you guys learned a thing or two. And I would greatly appreciate if you consider liking and subscribing as it would greatly help me out with the channel but anyways i will see you in the next tutorial